So you join us here in southern Portugal, uh, where we have been spending the past couple of weeks living in this Grand California 680, kindly lent to us by Volkswagen, and we're going to show you around. If you haven't already seen our travel vlogs from this trip, make sure you go back and have a look through our channel and check them out because it was one epic trip that we did. But yeah, let's take a look around this awesome Grand California. So starting at the front, the Grand California is based on a VW Crafter platform. So it's a two litre turbo diesel engine, 177 horsepower, more than enough power. This is a four motion version as well. <laughs> just laughing at Bentley, just. That's Bentley our dog, if you haven't, if you don't already know him. Very chilled out, he's loving the south, uh, south of Portugal. But yeah, so it's a 177 horsepower. This one's a four motion, so it's got four wheel drive, long wheelbase, loads of room. That's what the 680 means, it's a 6.8 uh, meter long van. They also do the Grand California in a 600, which will be linked in the description below. We've already done a review about that. But what's it like to drive? It's really, really straightforward, really easy. Uh, it's a fully automatic gearbox. It's a 3.88 tonne vehicle, so if you don't have a C1 licence, you can't drive it, I'm afraid. You have to get that C1 licence. But the good thing about that is that it's just got plenty of payload. Over, well, It's got like 500 and something kilos of payload, which is more than enough for, for a couple of people travelling. We have done over 2,500 miles in this van, and we're still going. Like I say, we're on the south of Portugal, so we've got a long way to go back home yet. But it's been a breeze. It just eats up the miles effortlessly uh, but yeah let's take a look around the outside anyway now this particular Grand California is finished in two-tone paintwork it's over two thousand pound option not something that we'd be that fussed about but um, it certainly sets it apart from a normal crafter that's for sure uh, as we move further back obviously you've just got a passenger door on that side this is uh, the vent for the Truma boiler which has hot water as well as the central heating gas central heating um, an interesting tip if you're ever looking at one of these and thinking about buying one used if it's round it means it's uh, got the gas uh, heating fitted which is the standard setup gas uh, central heating and hot water if it's a square setup then it has the upgraded uh, diesel heater instead so that sips diesel from your fuel tank and heats the engine that way and then uh, you just have a little bit of gas for cooking and that's it so yeah we actually quite like the gas central heating uh, so we'd probably keep it as standard if it was ours that's to access the toilet it's a cassette toilet fit for cassette, cassette toilet in there really like how that is body colored as well it's not usually the case on the uh, camper vans and motones but that's really nice got a couple of windows you can see it's been roasting here today. So the windows are fully open and you'll see from the inside that they've all got fly screens as well as blackout blinds as well, which is very nice. This here is the electric point, socket to plug into uh, mains hookup or shore power as the Americans would call it. And uh, yeah, I apologize for it being as dusty as it is. It's not ours, so we've not cleaned it. On the back, two windows, opening windows, again with fly screens and blackout blinds. They're really nice to look out because your head is this end uh, when you're sleeping in bed as well, so that's nice. This has got reversing camera right up at the top, uh, which <laughs> gives an incredible view actually. Um, when you're reversing out of parking space and things like that, it's so high up that you can see a long way either side of what's coming. Pretty good. You'll also notice that the Grand California has a high top roof, which is a, a specific camper roof for the crafter, which um, you don't usually get unless you buy a specific VW Grand California. It just gives extra height inside. It's nice, it's good. So on the driver's side, right at the back, you've got an opening window again with fly screen, blackout blind, and then there is another window. And we wondered for ages why it didn't open until we opened the door and realized that if you had the window open, open the door, you would shear it right off. So that's why that window doesn't open. 
this window and the opposite side window in this position are both optional extras well it comes as one you either have just two at the back or four at the back but it's a really nice addition just gives even more light inside as well just beneath the windows this is your filler for your water so you just access your fresh water in there and also down the side this actually has sensors all the way along which is really nice for um, when you're maneuvering because obviously it's a long vehicle it swings in quite a way and it's just good for checking that you are not going to take anything out or rip the side of your van to pieces so yeah that's a nice addition right at the top you've got a Thule um, rollout awning which is the full length of the van nice and big and the winder is in the back we'll show you that later and then this one is actually fitted uh, with an air con system in lieu of a skylight above the bed so if you plug in into the mains you can have air conditioning powered through that uh, if you want that but again it's an option and then even further forward as well there is also a satellite dish which automatically pops up finds a signal and yeah you know it's crazy overkill really but uh, most of these vans are overkill really for camping but we love it we love it and then moving further forward again obviously driver's door you have an automatic step which either opens when you open the sliding door and it opens automatically and then when you shut it, it closes again or you, you'll see later with the control panel you can put the van in camping mode and then it stays out for when you're on the campsite so it's not in and out all the time oh just before we open the door there's also an awning light that runs the whole length there look and it's really bright it's fantastic that when you're in camping mode as you walk up to the van if you unlock the van it automatically turns that light on so you can see your way but yeah let's take a look inside for that i'll hand you over to my glamorous assistant right well come on inside and have a look so welcome to the main space i'm glad that sean's taken his shoes off because i've just done a lot of tidying in here as you can imagine two weeks on the road with dust and bentley's hair everywhere has been a nightmare so but we've had a very dinky little brush <laughs> look <laughs> who brought this with us so I've been going around with cleaning with that. I would recommend taking a miniature Dyson with you if you've got a dog. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the main space. So we can comfortably fit four adults sat in here, just chilling out in an evening. We've tried and tested it and it's been great. Most of the time it's obviously just me and Sean and Bentley. Bentley gets the bench seat. Sean and I will sit in the front or we'll all swap around. What I really like about this van and this area, and you don't get this with many crafters, is sometimes they have a lip that sort of does like a curve thing on the floor that's raised it's like a step and this doesn't have that this is all completely flat floor so the dog and us don't trip over it the dog can use the whole space to sleep which makes it very comfortable and actually very easy to move around and as you can see there's a lot of head height here and that's due to the van having that extra bit of height which is really useful so at the front here you've got two captain's chairs they swivel around obviously so you've got the driver's seat and the passenger seat and then there's plenty of space between you for we put bentley's bowl down there but you can also store things down there uh, whilst you're obviously not traveling uh, it's very useful you've got some usb plugs up the front uh, it's quite handy there's also usb points sort of dotted all around the place and some plugs and things there's a plug just under the seat there's also another plug a little 12 volt plug uh, or 10 amp plug just on the side there and also we've got on this one a, a wireless charging bit for uh, your phones as well which is quite exciting now some of you who have seen these vans at the shows will have said that they thought it felt quite cramped in here most of the time i think that's because they had the table out um, now the table can actually be taken off and put away in the boot which is what we've done it's actually what we've done for this entire trip because we didn't really feel it was necessary we didn't need the storage because the kitchen's huge. Uh, we didn't need that for cutting up food and stuff like that. Uh, and we're quite happy to eat off our laps or use the outdoor table and chairs, which is really nice. So it's much more spacious in here without the table. And uh, personally, I don't even think I would have brought it with me. So as for lighting in the lounge area, uh, you can just flick a switch and there's lighting all above the cabinets there. That's a nice little soft light in here, but also if you wanted a reading light, you've got these which turn on and off and they're dimmable. 
Um, you've also got a skylight above you, which you can wind open to get some fresh air. That's also got the um, fly screen and the blackout screen on it, as well as the window at the side in the living room, which has exactly the same. Incidentally, if you do open that window at the side, that actually opens out to where the vent is for the gas trimmer heating. Now, if you open that window whilst the gas trimmer heating is on, it will turn it off because it doesn't want the fumes to come inside. So that's something to be aware of. Talking of the trimmer heating, that is also underneath the chair, the um, bench seat at the back. Uh, so that boiler is under there and there's also several points on the floor that blow the uh, nice heating into the lounge area. Now onto one of my favourite areas, which is the kitchen in the van, because the kitchen is absolutely awesome. So although a lot of you would complain that it's just a two hob burner, one of them's bigger than the other one, and a sink, you'd think, oh, there's not a lot I can cook there, but you'd be wrong, because as usual, we brought like all our ridge monkeys with us. And if you don't know what they are, they're basically like, well, I'll show you quickly. It's basically a very thick pan that goes on the hob looks like this, opens up, but can act kind of like an oven. So you can put things like garlic bread in here, pizza, and it comes out really good. They put it on a low heat, brilliant, love them. So that has never been a problem for me. I think ovens just take up a lot of space and this doesn't take up that much space. So we'll put a link in the description to them as well if you want to check them out. But I highly recommend that for any camper vanners. So the kitchen has two hobs, like I mentioned earlier. They both run off the gas. Uh, that we've got that also goes to the Truma blown air heater. You've also got a really sizable sink actually, which is quite nice. Um, hot and cold water that comes out of there as well, which is really handy for washing up. You've got a light just above the kitchen too. Keep everything nice and light whilst you're cooking so you can see what you're doing. But more than that, having the door open, if you don't want to let the bugs in, you can put these fly screens across and that goes across the door as well. So you can get a beautiful view whilst you're cooking but if it's freezing cold don't worry about that either because the door has got a massive window in it and again that window's got the fly screen and the blackout screen in it and that's a really big window too moving on to the fridge in the kitchen i must say it's not my favorite design but it is a good size oh apparently we've just got beer in the fridge and some milk and water but there is another layer <laughs> Oh, we've got some desserts as well. Very well stocked. So the drawer is quite useful um, for putting extra stuff. It's quite shallow. The bottom, the drawer comes out to about here. So you can put taller objects in this end, like water and your milk and things. Um, it does store a lot of things, but I think I'd rather have a whole big unit that comes out. I know it's not as easy to get stuff at the bottom, but things don't fall out the side, which is quite handy. Um, so yeah, if that was available, I think I'd like to see that, but maybe some of you would prefer this design. And then at the top, people always said the 600 looked like an ice cream van. Well, you can actually have ice cream in here. We do. I've got lots of other little things as well, but it's great having a little freezer bit in the van. So yeah, it's a huge amount of storage, but maybe not my favorite design, but it does the trick. Whilst I'm talking, the sun has just set and it's absolutely stunning. Just a few other things to point out in the kitchen. There's an extension here. Also at the back, if you were to cook outside, there is a little flap that comes out that's got a 12 volt plug in it as well. Um, and I think a satellite. Has it got a satellite? Yeah, it's got a satellite thing, so you can put a TV outside, some USB plugs, as well as a plug. So if you want to cook outside, you can. Now there's loads of storage in the kitchen in the 680 versus the 600. I didn't think the 600 had that much space because the fridge takes up so much of it. 600 comes up to about here, and then there's a fold out bit that goes onto the bed for extra kitchen space. So you miss out on all this storage, but this storage is amazing. So starting at this side, We've got a huge cutlery drawer, absolutely massive. All of these are positive catches as well, so they don't fly open whilst you're driving. Uh, you've also got the gas um, turners here to turn them on and off for the boiler and for the hob. 
that's a hand, nice handy access that is. Then there's another drawer on this side which we put all of our bin bags and things in, very handy. Below that we've got all of our equipment, pretty much ridge monkeys and saucepans, um, a few things like cleaner but plates and things like that. And then we've got the most exciting drawer ever, a huge drawer just filled with treats. Now above the kitchen you've also got a couple of units um, that link to the bedroom as well but we've used these just for a few handy things like um, kitchen towel, uh, soap, got our cups and um, some amazing treats from Portugal <laughs> which are very tasty. So we've got lots of sockets here as well and um, we put a um, three pin plug in that, it's got a USB in as well. That light also is the one that does all the uh, lighting around the top. Um, but it's just handy if you've got like a kettle or something that you want to plug in there. Now across from the kitchen is your command centre that tells you about the battery, water, that kind of thing. So if you switch it on, you can put it in camping mode, which means that the step stays out no matter whether you open the door or not. Um, in non-camping mode, the step will only come out when the door is open and when you shut it, it will go away again for obviously driving. Um, then you can control all your lights from here, the inside ones and the amazing outdoor light. Uh, temperature, things like keeping the... Um, hot water running uh, or whether it runs off gas and electric or a mixture or one or the other. Um, you've got your Truma gas heating as well. That's also controlled by this panel. Uh, you've got the aircon unit as well. Then things like how much fresh water, how much gray water you've got in there and also things like the battery. And one of the best things that you get getting a bigger van for us anyway is a toilet and a shower on board. And it's a lovely little unit really easy to keep clean the light goes on automatically when you open the door it's got air vent in there the shower's really easy to use the toilet's really easy to use the toilet's even got an air system which when you open the toilet up it's got like a air system that takes all the bad smells away so it never smells in there it's really easy to dry once you've had a shower there's a um there's a point in there as well where the heating comes out so it dries really quickly in there so if you want to because it's such a small space if you have stuff that you need to dry put them in there with the heater on you'll be sorted loads of hooks loads of places to put stuff the sink is such a great idea being folding as well everything's just really really clever another feature that you get in the 680 over the 600 is an extra storage unit just behind the shower and toilet cubicle these are huge the only thing I'd like to see in there is a rail so that you could actually hang stuff up. Uh, we just put towels and camera equipment for some reason in there and a few of Sean's clothes. Um, we'd like to see a rail in there or even shelves. Shelves would be quite useful. But again, these are all things that you could probably retrofit yourself as to what you actually want for yourself. And then underneath that is another small storage cupboard. Again, we've used that for things like backpacks and Bentley's toys and laundry and stuff like that. So it's easily accessible. Uh, there's two big lockers not lockable but they've got the safety catches on so obviously the door doesn't swing open they're absolutely massive there's so much space in there for big water bottles cereal we've got bread in there we've got everything so it's really convenient and then also on the other side we've got all bentley's food which is you know we're away for three weeks so we've got to take a lot of food with us for him all his treats it's so convenient and it's great that it's accessible from this side as opposed to the garage but having that massive amount of space is really helpful Welcome to my favourite area of the van, which is this huge bed that you sleep lengthways on. It's absolutely massive. Um, Sean's like five foot eleven. He's got more than enough space. I'm five foot nine. I've got more than enough space. Really big. It's got this cutout here, um, but it doesn't go all the way along. It only goes to a point and then obviously it's all one bed. We decided to have single duvets each because the dog likes to join us and it's much easier to fight with just one duvet than a massive one fighting the dog for that so anyway like I say it's huge and it's so comfy it's got the Froley I can't even lift it because I've got it all sorted um it's got the Froley springs underneath the mattress the mattress is really thick it's about this thick um it's really super comfy you don't need a mattress topper obviously everyone's got their own preferences of beds and things like that but um, we found it super comfy. All of these lockers are pretty much the same. Um, we've got Sean's stuff on one side and my stuff on the other, plus I managed to acquire this locker at the back here. I also do my makeup here um, and I can show you how. This has got my jumpers in at the back. 
you've got a nice net here which is quite handy I take my little mirror out then this has got all my shirts and things in I'll just balance this here I've got my own little makeup you know just spread my makeup out I mean you can do it in the bathroom obviously because there's a lovely mirror in there but why take up bathroom space when you can do it in the luxury of here and also what I like is if this didn't have the aircon unit we would have a nice skylight and you'd have lovely light coming in here so it'd be really nice so me being me I've obviously added my own touch which is putting fairy lights in that is my trademark that's just with command clips and I think it looks really pretty really homely in here with the fairy lights as you can see the sun is now set because we've been doing this tour for a little while but it is stunning what a location don't forget to check out those videos like we said check out the videos because we did some amazing trips to various different places but let's have a look inside the garage it's pretty full for a couple of reasons um one we've been storing loads of water you'll see if you look back through um our actual trip throughout europe you'll see that we had a bit of an issue with the water pump on this particular one because it's a pre-production um, Grand California 680 so that's why we stockpiled some water it's working fine at the minute but anyway I'll let you look through those videos to find out about that but like I said I'm not going to take everything out because it would take well it's not loads in there but one of the things that taken taken up a lot of space is the fact that we're actually carrying an extra two gas bottles so in here it does actually store um, two gas bottles with a changeover thing so once one's empty you swap it over and it's nice and easy to change on to the other gas bottle but they were UK um, Cali gas and you can't buy Cali gas in Europe it's impossible uh, so we had to buy a different regulator and different adapter again you'll find all this out if you watch our videos just watch them you know you need to but you'll find out that we had to buy another two bottles um, so that's why we're carrying an extra two gas bottles so you wouldn't normally have that wasted space we've also got the table in here that we spoke about that we're, we're not using so that's kind of a partition between gas bottles and then stuff that we actually use got a couple of um, jacks uh, not jacks a couple of chocks uh, to lift up the front <laughs> I will remember the name uh, there's a light in here there's also a heater outlet point which is really nice and you actually feel that come up the side of the bed which is really nice if you don't like that if you rather have a cooler bed don't worry about it you can shut that off and you won't get any heat at all there is also a 12 volt socket and also an, another mains point as well so yeah you can power loads of stuff further back there's a cupboard which has yet more storage the theme of this van is storage there's a lot of it and then in front of that there's a little more storage but also that's where all the electrics are housed so the trip switches and that kind of thing you'll see in the doors uh, one of the chairs is still out at the minute but we've got the table which you can take out and um, use as an outdoor table and then you've got chairs that store one in either side as well so yeah that is pretty much the garage uh, there is also a shower point which is hot and cold water which is very very nice and the actual shower attachment itself is stored in here see in there that just slides away really neat touch but i think that's pretty much the garage as oh in fact at the top there is also the wind out awning um lever to, to actually take the awning out as you can imagine laid here with an epic view back doors open it is stunning well that brings this tour to a conclusion yeah. um but really we should talk about how we've got on with the van yeah because i think a lot of you be intrigued to know how we've enjoyed it we're california ocean owners if you don't already know uh we've got the t6 point Sorry, we've got the T6. I wish we had the T6.1. We've got the T6 uh, California Ocean at the moment. And um, yeah, how have you felt having oh, a bigger yeah, van? It's been really, really good for us. Yeah, we've absolutely loved it. I completely get that having a bigger van um, no longer gives you the usability day to day that a California Ocean does uh, or beach or anything like that. For the type of trip that we've done, where we've we've just toured all through France, Spain, Portugal, etc. We've just found that 
it's been great. We've been able to stop where, wherever we want pretty much at loads of airs and just you have facilities on board and just find it really, really easy. It's just a different way of, of traveling for us that we've, we've really enjoyed. Yeah, it's been nice not having to, because we, we quite like having good facilities at campsites. Yeah. So it's been nice because we, we don't like to plan anything. So it's been nice just not having to feel like you have to plan ahead and find a good campsite with facilities and things like that. So it's been nice just having the stuff on board. Um, we briefly mentioned that the pump hasn't worked sometimes. It, Like I say, it's yeah. pre-production model. It was annoying. Um, and VW unfortunately couldn't fix it. Again, they couldn't fix it in a quick enough time really because we wanted to get out and travel. Yeah, so we didn't want to sacrifice our trip. Pre-production models are always like this. There's always some fault. And we were warned about this. We were warned that there might be some ghosts yeah. in the system. Um, but yeah, like I say, we haven't actually had any problems and we have been able to shower and use yeah. out all the pumps and things, haven't we? And another interesting point as well is uh, when you actually look at photos of the materials used and everything like that, it just looks like a white and I, I know people keep using the word clinical a white clinical looking plasticky uh, camper and like Lizzie said uh, when she's showing the bedding and everything like that once you put your own materials in there yourself your own homely things in there that white just becomes like a background and and it's the biggest thing is that it's not plasticky at all no. it's real thick um, like a wooden composite kind of material and it's all so well made there's a lot of vans like this that try and keep under the three and a half tons and I completely understand why because they want to sell it to more people but at sacrifice of build quality and material quality this, this is not the case the materials are really really good and because of that obviously they've had to make it that bit heavier but... I find as well that it's actually really easy to clean that's one thing you sometimes find with vans that have already got like wood and things like that or like they sometimes have wood that has been oiled that kind of thing so it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of work to keep it looking amazing this is all completely wiped downable it's really easy and like i say you add carpets you add a bit of bedding you just add a few fairy lights pillows you know and it's yours all of a sudden and it doesn't feel clinical it just feels easy to clean and it's fresh and it's nice and light and airy inside so bad points for you there must be some bad points well yeah i mean number one for me we, we didn't mention it um but number one is definitely the um, screen cover that goes on the inside. It is, I mean, I've got it here. Just to, it's I'm like not a even fabric gonna, kind I'm of thing. I'm not even going to show it. Yeah, it's like a tent thing that you have to build up. It makes me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've been um, kindly lent a Rainbow Screens external cover, which has been fantastic. Oh, it is a lifesaver. But when you're wild camping in spots where, if for whatever reason you need to move on, you don't want to be using an external screen you want to be able to drive off and not have to get out of the van so yeah we have used this a, a couple of times so these but, are just um, magnetic things that go on the side windows exactly the same as what is in the california ocean fine but building a tent for the front <laughs> windscreen cover i really wish that someone would come up with just a similar screen to watch us in the ocean you know one of those ones that just yeah. pulls across meets in the middle clips in done i know for fine. for things like <laughs> Ducatos and things like that. Um, those based vans, there there are like a bit like what we've got on the side here that just pull out and just slide and clip into place. That'd yeah. be great if they came up with them, but unfortunately they don't. Um, a negative for me, um, it's got um, a single leisure battery. Now you, you have to have the solar panel really just to keep topping that up if you want to do the kind of traveling that we've done. We have actually only plugged it in probably just a couple of times but we've been three times I think yeah uh, probably a total of like 24 hours we each time has only been for about 12 hours so in fact it has just been twice we we plugged it, it in yeah we plugged it in in France and we plugged it in in Spain and that's it which I know sounds great and you think well the, surely the battery is big enough but we've been doing quite a lot of miles so we've been doing a lot of driving which obviously charged the battery and the fridge runs off the batteries as well yeah yeah it's so not a gas fridge I would like if it was me, I'd like another um, ledger battery as well. Two batteries, that'd be quite nice. Um, I'm sure it's something that you could add if you wanted to at a later date. But having the solar panel on the roof, I don't think we talked about it earlier, but there is a solar panel on the roof yeah. that charges that battery. So obviously in the sun of Portugal, it's great, isn't it? So yeah, and that's an option. So uh, that's on the 680, it's 174 watt. It's 104 watt um, if you have the 600. 
but yeah so you do need that i think that's quite an essential option and just gives you a bit more flexibility for wild camping i think the last thing to say really is um one thing that we haven't really ever used here is the aircon unit i think that's no. pointless I also don't really think the satellite dish is really that. We, no. I mean, we don't watch TV. If you watch TV, then great, get the satellite dish. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother. But I'd much rather have a skylight at the back over the bed than the aircon unit. And the aircon unit is really loud as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we tried it briefly, and you have to be plugged into the mains obviously to run that because it's a very um, energy consum uh, consuming, very high energy consuming product. Um, but for us like i say we we've enjoyed not being on mains hookup we've enjoyed just just using the van all the time um off off grid so uh yeah for us a circulation through the actual camper would be much nicer with two skylights that'd be great and being able to lie in bed and look at the stars that'd be lovely and you'd save two grand because it's a two grand option to have that <laughs> <Yeah>. air con <laughs> but okay. yeah so uh, we've absolutely loved it. I think Bentley's loved it, Bentley but he's just asleep. Loved it. So he, yeah. he actually doesn't really care. <laughs> but um, he has <laughs> loved it. Uh, yeah, we've just had an epic trip. Like I say, go back and watch them. Click in our channel and go and have a look. And make sure you subscribe as well. Um, it'd be really, really nice to have you guys on board. And we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on all sorts as well. Yeah. So yeah. join the discussion because we're on. A, we've got a Facebook group called A Bus and Beyond Chat, and that's where you can talk all things camper vans with very similar, like-minded people. Safe zone. We check every post before it goes out, so no sales and things like that. So check that out too. Mm. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you want to. Yeah. Tell us what. <laughs> Bentley's making loads of noise. Leave a comment about what you think of the 680 and what you would do it to it to personalise it or what options you would pick as well. Or have you ordered one that's really exciting yeah, if you have? Yeah. So let us know. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next video. Bye. Cheers. Bye.